when you and I maintain saltiness, it's because we've maintained a connection to God's purposes and plans in the earth. You are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. <clears throat> in, uh, in my uh, early years of uh, or just a disciple, just following Jesus, uh, when I would come across these verses, I would, I would remember that in Bible days, salt was used to preserve meat. And so when I would read, you're the salt of the earth, uh, I felt the Lord was saying then, uh, we are that which helps to preserve culture or values, uh, those kinds of things in society. That's what I would refer to as a secondary truth, an implied truth. It's not the truth Jesus brought up. In other words, he, he addresses one thing, but the implication is a second level. That would be the second level, preser uh, preservation of values, uh, way of, of thinking. Jesus said, if a salt has lost flavor, salt is for flavor. On most of our kitchen tables, we have salt and pepper. Pepper changes the flavor of a meal. Salt enhances the flavor of a meal. The important thing to think about when we talk about being salt is our assignment to add flavor. Listen carefully to add flavor to what already exists in our community. Not all invention, not all creativity, not all beauty, not all uh, medical inventions, not, not all those things come from believers. By design, many of those things come from unbelievers. Why? Because it rains on the just and the unjust. And if it all came through us, we'd become proud, arrogant, and want to be in charge. It wouldn't be healthy for us. So a huge part of being effective as salt in a culture is that we actually see God's value on the unbeliever before they have placed their faith in him. He gives them ideas. He works through them. I believe we owe every believer three levels of honor at least, three that I'm aware of, and every human being two levels of honor. Number one, Every person's created in the image of God. Every person represents an aspect of God's nature, person, that no one else represents. Created in the image of God. Number two, every person has been gifted by God to function in life. Now, one may have five talents, sums of money. One may have three, one may have one. There are varying levels of graces that God assigned to individuals, but every person has been given something. And it's, it's prophetic people. It's people that have a tenderness towards celebrating and valuing other people. If they can see the gifting and the grace that is in that individual and to be able to affirm it, to acknowledge it, to celebrate what God has actually put in, in you know, to be able to say, man, I love how you put colors together. I love how you, how you perceive uh, this yard, how you made it look so beautiful. I love how you, you seem to connect people. Every time I'm at a dinner at your house, you always put the right people next to the right people in your, in your dinner party. It's, it's just these little things. But it's just taking, it's being intentional to find the treasure that is in somebody else. Salt enhances the flavor that's already there. You go to certain cities in our country, you go to Austin, Texas is a great example. They have a unique uh, musical, music culture there. You know, who decided that? You know, there's some cities where it seems like every furniture manufacturer in the country is in that area, in that region. Who decided? This area is for furniture. You know, I mean, I don't know who decides it. Somehow, somebody gets a breakthrough and they attract other people and they start reveling in the, can I say, anointing or grace that God assigned to a particular area. It's wisdom for, for us to perceive and to see that which God has designated over a city, over a region, and then so into it, to honor, to, to, um, uh, to value it, to celebrate, to acknowledge it. You're the salt of the earth. Salt that's lost its flavor. That word flavor there is actually, uh, the, the losing of flavor is actually the word foolish. Salt without flavor, the original language, is foolish. 
So what is salt with flavor? It, it's, it's an easy one. You just look to the other side of the corner. This is, this is, we, we got one that says foolish. The other side is the opposite. Now, you're not going to take the risk. Okay. All right. All right. I, I realize you don't trust me. That's, that's the bottom line. All right. So salt without flavor is foolish. Salt with flavor is wisdom. It's actually, the, it's not foolish. <laughs> there it is. That's the safest answer right there. That's, that's wise. That's wisdom. Yeah. That's wisdom. Not, not foolish. No. So th- think with me ab- about this. Wisdom is the mind of Christ. Wisdom is the mind of Christ. Wisdom, the, Jesus, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, Jesus is the person of wisdom. He is wisdom personified. He is, as we've called, he is perfect theology. He illustrates perfectly the mind of the Father. And so when you and I maintain saltiness, it's because we've maintained a connection to God's purposes and plans in the earth. It's not just, uh, I can give you good counsel on where to invest your money or something. Don't come to me, but just an example, (laughs) just an illustration. It's not, just, it's not just that. It's, it's the fact that there, there is a sharp edge on my life that prophetically perceives shifts in seasons and knows how to position for them. When that kind of saltiness is existent in our life, that we live with that kind of intentionality, then the people around you start to savor the flavor that you actually bring to a community. Most of us like to be the salt of the earth, and we think of it this way. It's like the salt shaker. We unscrew the top, and we pour the entire contents in the corner of the dinner plate because we like to be together. You don't enhance the flavor of the meal together. This is together. We're in the shaker. We're about to take the lid off in another 20 minutes, and you're going to get sprinkled. There are, there are some of you in certain neighborhoods that you, you don't even realize it, but the way you do life, your value system, it's not just preaching on a soapbox, it's the way you do life. So prophesize identity and purpose into your community. It is salt. It is your defining, you are defining the reasoning of God, the reason of God, the purpose of God behind all of our existence. It's that edginess that helps to keep you in that place of radical, radical influence. I personally, I've been praying for people to really, uh, for us to increase in wisdom. I'm going to quit praying for that, I think. I'm just going to pray, God, make people miserable without it (laughs) so that you pray on your own. (laughs) Honestly, just the realization, oh, I need greater wisdom for this. That kind of dependency, that approaching him with poor in spirit, not approaching him with I've got it all, Approaching him poor in spirit. God, I need you to give me that touch of divine wisdom because I want to represent you well.